All right. <laughs> Amen. Let me help the re almost retired along the way. <laughs> All right. Anybody got a song or a testimony? Got another card here. It says, thank you all so much for your prayers while Joe was sick and dad's surgery. We appreciate them and the delicious meals you provided more than you could ever know. We love each of you. Love Joe, April, and the kids. So thank the Lord for that. Thank all the ladies for uh, taking the time to get them a meal or whatever they did. So I appreciate that. I know they do too. Anybody got a song or a testimony? Come on, Mike. We, we're one step ahead. <laughs> Many times burdens drive me to my knees and I wonder what the reason can be for the things that bring me pain for the day filled with rain and my tears like the river start flowing up Many times I cry, Jesus, hear my plea. Precious Savior, have mercy on me. Then my faith grows stronger, and I understand that nothing can touch me that doesn't pass. touch me, though life's pillows may roll, nothing can touch me, for he's still in control, nothing can touch me, unless he says it can, for nothing can touch me, that doesn't pass through his hand. Many times world conditions seem so drear And my heart is ever faster with fear When the pride of mortal man tries to gain control again And it seems that the forces of evil might win many times I cry Jesus hear my plea precious Savior have mercy on me then my faith grows stronger and I understand that nothing touch me that doesn't pass through his hand nothing can touch me though life's billows may roll nothing can touch me for he's still in control nothing can touch me unless he says it can for nothing can touch me that doesn't pass through His hand. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Anybody else got a song or a testimony? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm glad nothing could touch me. We, a lot of times we'll, we'll, we'll think that, uh, we'll just think that life, it just keeps blowing in. It's went through the Father's hands. It's for a reason. Everything's for a reason. And uh, stuff does come, but we've got to press in for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Anybody else have anything? All right. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. If you'll turn your Bible with me. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. We're going to look at David here this morning. I had a, uh, tried to narrow down a title this morning. I uh, couldn't just get one. I, Things we've lost. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Recover all. Uh, I, I just can't. There, I couldn't narrow it down to one. The Lord uh, just had so many things here in this uh, uh, few uh, in this chapter here. Uh, but we're going to look and see what the Lord has for us this morning. If you'll stand when you find your place for the reading of God's word, First Samuel chapter number thirty. We'll start reading verse number one. You have to bear with me with these names. Hopefully, we'll get through them right. And we'll do our best for the Lord. But 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verses number 1 through 19, it said, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites uh, had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And he had taken the women captives uh, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters uh, were taken captives. And then David and the people that were with him lifted up uh, their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken uh, captives, uh, uh, and Honam and uh, the Jezreelists, and, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people were, uh, was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar the priest, uh, Ahimelech, son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered uh, uh, him, at Pursue, for thou shalt uh, surely uh, overtake them, and without fail, recover all. And we'll stop reading right there. Father, I thank you and praise you for the opportunity is to get to stand and preach your blessed word of God. God, I thank you, God, for the honor and privilege it is to get to be in the house of God today. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of God. I'm glad, Lord, to be saved today. There's nothing could touch me. There won't be a, 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 a fiery dart of hell, Lord, even touch a, a, a hair on my skin, God. Lord, I won't smell smoke. I won't. Uh, there's no way I'll go to hell because of your saving grace. And I'm glad for the Word of God today. I ask you to help us to preach it uh, the way that you'd have it presented today. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You be seated. All right, now, uh, as I said, I didn't really ha couldn't narrow it down on a title. Things we've lost. Uh, uh, encourage yourself in the Lord. Uh, recover all. Uh, uh, this uh, scripture has so many things that you could apply to your Christian walk. Uh, uh, now, we find here in the first part of the chapter, the enemy has come in. Uh, uh, when David uh, isn't standing there protecting and watching, uh, uh, may I remind you that the enemy is subtle. Uh, uh, the Bible talks over in Genesis, now the serpent was more subtle. Uh, uh, Satan's going to creep in where you don't think he would creep in. Uh, 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 Satan's going to, when you're not watching and you're not protecting, uh, uh, that's when Satan's going to creep in, try to uh, mess up your life. Uh, there's been times that stuff's come even to this church uh, in my little time here. There's been uh, things in people's lives in my life, uh, and, I, and uh, you get to messing around and, uh, and just get distracted, and uh, next thing you know, man, we, we're in a mess. Uh, uh, we're in a mess. Uh, uh, and uh, it's kind of like, 
back, uh, uh, that story I told about when I was a kid, they told me, uh, they said, now Jacob, you don't go, uh, well, he's on a goat cart, and they said, now don't go down there uh, to this part of the field down there. There's a ditch down there, and you'll get stuck in it. And you know what? I got to mess around, wasn't watching. You know what I did? I ran right into the ditch and wasn't even look. I, I, I was stuck in the ditch. Uh, and, uh, and that's the way the enemy does. Uh, he, he watches and he waits uh, till you're not watching and waiting, uh, and you're not uh, doing that. But there is going to be times that you're doing everything that you can for the Lord. You're watching. He's still going to sneak in. Uh, that's Satan's. Uh, he, uh, uh, it is his goal and his uh, uh, and his mission to get you messed up, uh, uh, get you overwhelmed, uh, uh, get you to where you doubt the Lord, get you in a state uh, uh, that you're like these uh, uh, here that uh, that they've come in and they've lost everything. They've lost their homes, lost their possessions, uh, they lost their wives, lost their children to the enemy. Uh, and now everyone was so distressed uh, uh, that they couldn't even weep. Uh, have you ever been to a point where you uh, where you was so distressed, so distraught, uh, so down and out uh, that you couldn't even weep for yourself? Now I, I've been. I, I I don't know about you, but you've almost been in a place where Satan had you so bound up by, by what was going on around you, you couldn't even pray. Uh, that you found yourself. In a, it's hard to even pray for yourself. And that is why it's so important uh, uh, that you pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ because there might be a day that it comes at your lot that you don't have the power to pray, that you've lost, uh, uh, that you're so bound up in whatever's going on in your life uh, that you can't even even weep, you can't even pray for yourself. That's why we've got to pray one for another. Uh, and you, uh, uh, you think that praying for one another, that mean, you know what, it helps me so much when I know people are praying for me. Hey, uh, I know uh, uh, when people uh, go into a hospital, you know what the first thing they say? I, I just need your prayers. I need your prayers. I, I need your prayers. Uh, uh, and uh, you can ask anybody when they go through a hard time, is there anything I can do for you? 99% of them will say, I need your prayers. We need your pray- We need to be praying for each other. But we find that these uh, uh, that David and uh, uh, David's men here they were so overcome with grief uh, uh, that they not able they they had uh, weep so long and so greatly that they couldn't even weep. Uh, they had no more power to weep. Uh, you ever found your place out where it just feels like you didn't have power? Didn't have the power to pray. Didn't have the power to go on. Seemed like, uh, well, this is it. I always, uh, uh, it's funny. I, I remind myself uh, 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 at my house there, uh, the old house that we uh, before we moved in the parsonage. Uh, it's got about uh, uh, it's got about three uh, uh, three uh, uh, three block height uh, underneath it to crawl space there. And I had to crawl up under there one day. And I'm a pretty big boy if you ain't not, if you ain't caught not wind of that yet. And uh, I crawled up under there, and I got about halfway back, and I thought. Nope, I ain't coming out. I'm going to die here. I didn't have no more power. I thought, no, this is it. This is, just bury me here. But not, yeah, I, I, I had come to a place where it was done. I didn't have power. I, I just felt like this is it. But you, sometimes you spiritually come to those places. You come to those places where you this is it. I don't know how, we, how do we go past this. How do we go past this? But I always like here in verse number one, and it came to pass. You know, every time that you have a hard time, it's going to come to pass. It may, you may be in that rut for a real, real long time, and you think, well, Lord, is this ever going to end? But it's going to come to pass. You keep pressing in uh, 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 to the Lord. You keep doing what you're supposed to do. Uh, your situation shouldn't change how you feel about the Lord. Uh, now, I've found a lot of people, their situation changes how they feel about the Lord. Their situation changes whether or not they go to church. Uh, their situation changes whether or not they pray. Uh, their situation changes those things. Uh, but I'm telling you, don't let your situation change how you feel about the Lord. But we find uh, that David's men, these were de- devoted men to him. Uh, they, was, uh, uh, they were devoted to him, and uh, they were so overcome with grief that they looked to David... And they blamed him and wanted to stone him. Now, I, I, I know I'm not the only one. Now, when hard times come and problems come, what do you most of the time you want to do? You want to start blaming. Well, this is what caused it. This is who caused it. Uh, well, uh, it was because of this. Uh, uh, it was because of that. Uh, Lord, why is this? Uh, what is, why, you, want to, uh, you want to start blaming. You want to start pointing the finger. You want to start looking for somebody to blame. You know what? Sometimes uh, 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 for some people it seems like it's easier to blame somebody than just to realize this is how it is. 
This is just life. This is a, this is a, maybe a, uh, can I say, maybe you shouldn't start blaming people and start looking for a solution. And the solution uh, to your problem is going to be found at the foot of the cross every time. At the, uh, in your word of God, uh, uh, I've been preaching on Wednesday nights, why we need our Bible. The solution's found in your Bible. Uh, you might get down and say, Lord, I need an answer now. Uh, hey, a newsflash for you, it's probably been written in that book already. If you need an answer, uh, I, and we'll thank God, uh, what do I do about about this. I, I need a clear guidance. Look to the Bible. It has got every answer you could ever need. And you say, Jacob, you talk a lot about the Bible. That's the only thing I've got is the Bible. It's not a book uh, of Jacob. Uh, uh, it's a book of the Word of God. That's what it is. It's a living, breathing Word. And that's why these men, that they had got so uh, in grief, they got so caught up that they started blaming David. They wanted to stone him. And uh, and and I know uh, this, and I know that I'm not the only one. I, every time grief comes, every time you have a bad day, you know who catches it the most: the people you live with. Every time it does, I, I just ask a wife when a when a husband has a bad day, they're gonna go home. And they think you're so honor and so hateful. You know what? It's uh, the same way. When a wife has a bad day, the husband's going to care uh, because you're the close. Why? David's men were so close to him, uh, and David was supposed to be their leader. David was supposed to be the one that, uh, that uh, was showing them the right way, and he'd already messed up because he'd went down there in the land of the, uh, uh, of the Philistines. Uh, Should have been down there. Uh, I know he was running for his life, uh, trying, uh, uh, trying to protect his life uh, from Saul there, but he shouldn't have been down there in the first place. Uh, and uh, but Brother Joe so taught it well this morning. Uh, the, uh, your actions have consequences. The places that you go, they have consequences. And this was, uh, and uh, because of David's uh, decision to go down here and uh, uh, to take up with them, uh, we find that he lost his possessions, lost his wife, lost their children, lost everything. It was burnt. But uh, can I say to you, David was just human. David was just human. How, you know what? Uh, how I know David was human? Because man used human. You know, uh, most of the time we look for David in two different aspects. We look to him as the, 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 the shepherd boy that killed the giant, or we look to him that, as the king that's, uh, uh, that, uh, that, had it, uh, uh, that committed adultery with Bathsheba. We looked at, that's the two things you look at David most of the time, but there's a lot of great things David did before and after him, but in between all these things. Uh, uh, because David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I like what David he, uh, did here. Uh, and these men, they had become so over, uh, overgrown with grief, overtaken with grief, that they started pointing a finger. And uh, uh, there, there was problems, and they started pointing a finger. But I like what David does. And it's probably one of my most favorite uh, parts of the Bible that I've, and I, when I read it for the first time. And you should probably underline it to, or write it down somewhere because there's going to be a day where you feel like you've lost everything. There's going to be a day where you feel like, Lord, where do we go from this? And you need to underline this right here in verse number 6. You need to write it down. He said, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Hey, uh, uh, he was just human. He made the mistakes, uh, 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 and, uh, and his mistakes cost. Uh, uh, but they, uh, uh, they were distressed, depressed. Uh, they were tired. They were mentally and physically uh, uh, drained. Uh, and, but David, uh, who was a man after God's own heart, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, and, and can I say to you, there's going to be times where the situation, you're not going to find any relief in what you're battling with. Uh, there, uh, uh, I hate to say it, sometimes there's not a bright side to the situation you're in. There's just not. Uh, uh, you, you can say that there is. Uh, there always is, but when you encourage yourself in the Lord. Uh, but when you're trying to look for encouragement just in what's going on, you're not going to find it. Uh, uh, when disease comes, there's no encouragement in disease. Uh, that, that's just, uh, there's no such truth. Uh, uh, there's no encouragement in death. Uh, but there is encouragement to know that when somebody dies and they're saved by God's grace, they're going to heaven. That's encouraging to me. There is encouragement when somebody uh, uh, that is uh, 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 that somebody is uh, they get sick and maybe they're lost and they get saved and they're sick. That's encouragement. That's encouraging yourself in the Lord. Uh, maybe uh, uh, when somebody gets cancer or somebody goes in a hospital that's near and dear to you, uh, maybe it's to help your faith. That's encouragement right there. That's encouraging yourself in the Lord. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, sometimes there, there is no hope in those trials. Uh, uh, but you can I tell you, there can be hope found in the cross today. There's hope found in the cross. 
There's hope found. Hey, even on your worst day, you can look to the cross. You can say, God, I'm glad what you did on Calvary for me. If you're saved by God's grace, you can always encourage yourself to know that even though that this life, it may not, and it came to pass, but after this life, there's a heavenly reward waiting on you if you're encouraged in the Lord. The only way you're going to be encouraged in the Lord is to be saved by God's grace. Saved by His grace. Uh, but Second Timothy 1 and 12, it says, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I, I'm glad for somebody that can keep my soul. Hey, you know what I committed to Christ? I give him my soul. I, he taken, he say, he's committed it against that day. What day are you talking about? The rapture of the church. I, he's able to keep it uh, on my lowest days I'm encouraged to know I'm saved by God's grace I'm saved by God's grace that's encouragement today I, 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 there is no encouragement in this life but there's encouragement in Christ today there's encouragement. I, I know who I believed. I, just like Job over there. Uh, Job didn't have much encouragement waiting on him looking around. Uh, uh, he had lost his daughters, lost his sons, uh, lost his possessions. Uh, his wife uh, was a nagging on him, telling him to curse God and die. His friends was pointing a finger at him. But you know what? He encouraged himself in the Lord. He said, for I, uh, he said, for my Redeemer liveth. I, he said, and I'm glad I can tell you, I, I know whom I believed, and His name is Jesus Christ today. I'm encouraged in Him. I'm encouraged in God today. I'm encouraged in Him. You know what? Uh, what also encouraged me? God's church. <laughs> Jesus' church. I'm glad. I get encouragement when I come to the house of God. And it's not because the preacher gets up here and hoops and holler or because we have guest preachers or Brother Joe gets up here. Uh, it's not that. It's what they're preaching about that encourage me. Hey, uh, it's not that songs, uh, the, uh, them beautiful songs of Zion, that, uh, uh, the voices. Uh, it's what we're singing about that encourage me. Hey, it, ain't nothing, it ain't that nothing can touch me. It's because, I, uh, because the one that I'm singing about when I was over there. I, uh, it's God that encourages me. I know who I'm, uh, I, for I know whom I, I have believed. And I know I believed in. I know who I've trusted, uh, who I've committed unto him against that day. I'm encouraged by the Lord. But when we see here that, uh, uh, that David does whatever Christian should do. David does whatever Christian should do. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Then he goes on and he said, and, and he said in verse number seven, he said, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod, and Abathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Now, uh, this, uh, this ephod, it, uh, it uh, piqued my interest, and uh, uh, I printed off here uh, uh, a commentary about it, and it said the ephod was a portion of the high priest uh, garments which speaks of prayer. The garment went over the garment that the regular priest wore. The ephod set the high priest apart. It was a garment he wore uh, when he went in to the golden altar of prayer. It had two stones, one on each uh, uh, shoulder on which were en uh, engraved the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. Six on one shoulder, six on the other. In other words, the high priest came uh, uh, to the altar of prayer bearing Israel on his uh, shoulders. Uh, this is a picture of Christ, uh, our great high priest who carries us on his shoulders. Do you remember his story uh, of the little sheep which got lost? Uh, with, uh, what did the shepherd do? He put the lamb on his shoulders and brought him back. Uh, I do not know who you are or where you are, my friend, but I do know that the Lord is prepared to come and get you, put you on his shoulders, and bring you back to the fold. Uh, wherefore he is able also to save them to the other most uh, uh, that come unto God by him, seeing he uh, ever liveth to make intercession for them. I'm thankful for that great high priest. Uh, he bore me on his shoulders. Uh, uh, he takes me in uh, and he saves me by his grace. Uh, uh, he takes my care. The Bible says, cast your care upon him because he cares for you. Uh, he takes your grief on his shoulders uh, and he takes it in and he prays for you. He makes intercession for me and you. Uh, that encourages me today. 
David went in. Uh, he put on this headpot and he went in and he sought the Lord. <laughs> and I'm thankful for my great high priest that goes in and he seeks the Lord for my, on my behalf. I, I pray to, uh, hey, you know when we pray in Jesus' name, <laughs> hey, oh, Jesus goes to the Father, makes intercession for me and you. I, I'm glad for a man named Jesus uh, uh, because he makes intercession for me and for you. Uh, uh, now, uh, now we find uh, uh, after uh, that David does this, uh, uh, da uh, he said, David, uh, he, he says, you know what? I can't do nothing else, huh? but I'm going to seek the Lord. He said, I'm going to go find a solution for my men. I'm going to go find a solution. And can I say to you, the only place you're going to find an answer uh, or a solution to the problem is in prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only place you're ever going to find a solution. Uh, uh, but uh, may I say, instead of every time trouble happens, uh, try uh, trying the blame game, maybe you ought to start looking for a solution. Go to the cross. Uh, go to the one that makes intercession for me and you. But David, uh, he goes in looking for a solution. He says, Lord... Uh, uh, he says, uh, uh, shall I pursue after that which is mine? Uh, and shall I, uh, shall I take them? And he says, and Lord, uh, uh, he said, will I overtake them? And the Lord answered him. I I'm glad when the God answers prayer. Hey, uh, the prayer, uh, uh, the prayers that you pray, they, uh, uh, it might seem like sometimes that God don't hear them, but He hears every one of them. Hey, you know what? There's prayers that's been prayed in this very room, and there's been prayers that's been prayed in your closet. They ain't been answered yet, uh, but they've been heard by the Master, uh, and He's not drawn short on His uh, uh, on His ability. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is not uh, an encouragement of myself or what my prayers can do, uh, uh, but uh, Tiffany's here today, uh, and uh, uh, and Tammy, uh, and the other morning, uh, uh, some of you might not have heard it Wednesday night, uh, but the other morning, about uh, 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, I was walking there at work uh, before anybody ever got there. Uh, and you know who come to my son, or my mind? It was Austin, Tiffany's boy. And I said, Lord, won't you say, uh, won't you bring him back into the fold? Well, Tammy come in that night to church. Uh, and you know what? Uh, she, uh, uh, Austin had texted and said, my, I think conviction's over me, Mama. Uh, and you know what? That's how God answered prayers. That's my Make an intercessory prayer. You say, uh, Jacob, uh, is it because you're the preacher? No, it's because I went to Jesus Christ and I said, Lord, make intercession for us. Lord, please provide a solution. I need you to provide a solution. He answered him and he said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besar, uh, where those that were left behind stayed. Now can I say to you, I like what uh, this uh, verse right here says. In verse no, in, now David in verse number 8, he's went in, he's prayed, and he's asked the Lord. And then he goes in verse number 9, and it said, so David went. David went. Uh, uh, and I hate to tell you, uh, uh, and the, but the Lord gives him the green light. Uh, uh, and uh, can I say to you, the Lord gives him the green light, and David went. Now, I, now David put in the prayer, but he also put in the legwork. This is not popular preaching, this part. Everybody likes the prayer part, but nobody likes the legwork part. Hey, I, you know what? Sometimes your prayers, they're going to have to have some legwork behind them. They're going to have to have some prayer uh, legwork behind them. Uh, hey, don't just pray to the Lord, send in lost people to be saved if you ain't out there witnessing to them. I, uh, I, if, you, uh, if you pray, God, add unto this church, and you ain't out there inviting anybody to church, why are you praying? Hey, uh, hey God can do all things. I know that prayer, uh, uh, and I'm not talking about that we, uh, uh, that we, uh, we try to live by our works, uh, but uh, God give you the ability and He give you the commandment to go out witness, and that's how you add unto the church is witness. But you can pray all day long, but God give you, if He give you two legs, give you the ability to go out and witness, uh, uh, and you're not, and you're praying, uh, I tell you, it's a shame on you. It's a shame on you. Hey, we put, uh, and God can do all things, and I'm not saying that, uh, uh, but uh, faith without works is what? Dead. You ought to go, well, if you want people to come to church, uh, want to see lost souls saved, you ought to go witness to them. Hey, and I know that's not the popular part of that, uh, popular part of the message. Hey, uh, can I say to you, if you want to go see God work in your life and, and you're not praying, if you're not sitting tight, uh, you say, God, I, I just my, re my relationship with you ain't where it needs to be, but then you don't take any time to pray, you don't take any time to read, you can pray that all day long, but th there's not a solution coming to you. There's no legwork behind it. That's not a popular part of the preaching. 
Uh, don't just pray, uh, uh, God, help me to be a better Christian, and then you don't come to church. You don't seek Him. Hey, d- don't pray, God, uh, if you've got a problem, let's just say it was alcohol. God, I've got a problem. I- I've been saved by Your grace, but I still fight the urge uh, 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 to drink. Well, don't go out buying six-pack and expect God just to take that from you. Don't go out to the bar. I, hey, I, if you've got a problem with lusting after the flesh and your cell phone's a problem, maybe you ought to throw that phone out the door. Die, hey, don't pray about it if you can't die, put some legwork behind it. Hey, I, I don't, you're going to have to put some legwork. And David, that's what he does. Now, he could have said, Lord, return on to me. And you know what? The power of God could have returned them. Yeah, he could have made the uh, Amalekites, he could have made them bring them right back. That's, that's how God was. But to, sometimes your legwork uh, uh, is required uh, so that God uh, can show you, uh, uh, that can, He can work through you and work with you uh, and, and show you just what He can do. Sometimes that's what it takes. Now, I'm not taking nothing away. Now, don't say, now the preacher said that God can't do all things. I have to put legwork behind my prayer. I don't say that. What I'm saying is sometimes uh, you need to put legwork behind your prayers, and that's what David did right here. Now, pray, now David has prayed. He put in his legwork, uh, and, uh, and then he's guided him every step. He, he provides him a, uh, an Egyptian in the field there that was uh, uh, the servant of one of the Amalekites there, and he points him right where he needs to go. And uh, then we find at the end of it, and it said uh, in verse number 17, it, 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 the, David has made it the whole way. He's, he's, got, his, uh, uh, he's got his family in sight. Uh, uh, it's about to all go down. He said, And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. Uh, and David rescued his two wives. And then there were, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spool nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. David recovered all. And uh, and I'll try to finish this morning. May I remind you uh, that he lost his possession, lost his children, lost his wives. And uh, uh, but can I say to you, in our time, in our day and time, uh, uh, Satan has come. Uh, and you know what? To this church, he's come to your life. Uh, and you know what? He's took some stuff from us. He uh, uh, he's took some stuff from us. You say, well, he didn't walk in the back door and come and take some. Hey, yes, he has. Uh, uh, yes, too. Uh, Satan came in, uh, and you know what? Uh, uh, you say, uh, he ain't took nothing from me. Uh, you might be in here today, and you say, there's no joy in my salvation. Uh, Satan took the joy out of your salvation. Uh, you know, and you, and, uh, uh, you may be in here today and say, well, my child's out in the world. Uh, that's something that Satan's took. He's enticed him to come down like that prodigal. Uh, uh, it may be the power that you once had with God. Man, you could come in here... Uh, maybe at one time in your Christian walk and say, man, I could shout the house down because I, I have power. And not that you, it's in you, but what's living inside of you. It's what I, I used to have power with God. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe it's a member of this church uh, that, the, that Satan's enticed them and drug them out. Maybe uh, he's took your peace, joy. Uh, and uh, a lot of people don't like this, uh, but maybe he's taken your song from you. Man, it's something good when, uh, when church people come in and start singing songs. Songs, I, I, throughout the Bible, you'll find that uh, God's people, they sung unto the Lord. They sang praises unto the Lord. But uh, may I, you, that Satan has taken things away from us, and, and, it, and he's took them away. And can I say to you, you don't have to sit there uh, and, and be like uh, David's men and not have any strength to go on. Uh, I'm tired of Satan robbing our services. I'm tired of there not being joy in serving the Lord. Uh, hey, if you woke up this morning and said, I just don't really feel like going to church, uh, you ought to wake up on Sunday morning and say, I'm glad I get to go to the church today. I'm glad I get to be a, uh, be a part of God's family. Satan's robbing that from you. Uh, and I'm tired of Satan winning every battle on every hand. Uh, and you know why? Because God's people have laid down. And quit fighting. And you know what? Uh, uh, the news media uh, and, and this country, the agenda of this, uh, this country is that, uh, that Christians can do what they want as long as it's within their confines. They don't spread it out nowhere. As long as we sit down and as long as we accept everything that, they, uh, that they're pushing. As long as we accept homosexuality, everything's all right. As long as we don't witness to other people, everything's all right. As long as we don't put, hey, I tell you what, you can post John 3.16 on the internet, a picture of it, and in five minutes, Facebook will, uh, they, they'll do away with it. It's a, it's a shame. As long as we lay down and just take what, uh, what the world has to say to us, as long as everything's all right. 
But the minute that we uh, stand up for what's right, the minute that we uh, seek God, the minute that revival starts seeking, you know what? They start attacking us. Uh, they, and, and I'm tired of Satan winning those battles. It's time. To, we look the enemy in the eye, uh, as uh, some of them old preachers of God used to say, it's time to look the enemy in their God-given eyeball and start fighting back. Uh, it's time that we start uh, getting on our knees and being prayer warriors like these old saints of God used to be. You know why that we ain't winning battles? Because they ain't saints, old saints of God on the altar uh, praying uh, that, uh, that God would help their children, that God would help this church. I, you know, I, I like it when them old saints of God, they get down. Them little old women with those buns on their hair, I tell you what, they had more power than a, than a crane could live. Uh, they had more power. They get to shouting. They get to, they get to testifying. They get to crying. And when they got up off the altar, they'd be tears of sorrow, tears of joy. I, and you know what? We don't have that power because we've been robbed of it. Them old, I, I tell you, them old ladies... They had more power. And, and you know what? More than that, uh, uh, and it wasn't just them old ladies. It's old men, them old men of God. They might not have said much, uh, but they had a place out there in the woodshed, and they'd get away after uh, when they got off work or they got done with uh, uh, whatever, and they'd get behind the woodshed, and they'd get on their knees, and they'd call out to an almighty God. Them old men of God, uh, that they didn't care. Uh, uh, they didn't care to tell you how it was uh, because uh, they were serving God. Uh, uh, they, uh, they was like Joshua. Uh, uh, choose you this day who you're going to serve. You know what? They was going to choose the Lord every time. It didn't matter if they lost friends. It didn't matter if they weren't popular in the community because they wanted to serve God. They, uh, they was tired. Uh, uh, they weren't going to just put up with anything. They weren't going to, and you know what? Uh, they wouldn't just say, well, there ain't much harm in it. Well, it's not a requirement to come to church on, uh, on Monday night and pray. It's not a requirement. It, it's not a requirement to come on Sunday night. It's not a requirement to come on Wednesday night. If you'd spend less time focusing on what's a requirement to be saved and, uh, and, and focus more on what can I do to, to bring honor and glory to God. Uh, hey, I'm tired of hearing what it is to be a requirement to, to be a Christian. Uh, if you just start saying, what can I do to uplift my church? Uh, what can I do to uplift my, my Savior? Uh, if you'd quit worrying about the requirements and start living in the joy that is God's, I'll tell you, that, that then you'd have power with God. You would recover all. You, you would start to see your children come back. You'd start to see people getting saved. We would recover those things. And that's what David did. He didn't say, well, I, I believe we're, just, we're all right back here. The enemy's got our wives. Heaven will help us. Uh, could you imagine if my if somebody come in, uh, uh, Brother Tommy, uh, uh, Brother Joe, uh, could you imagine somebody, somebody come in and stole your wife and your children away from you what you do? Could you imagine? I do, I just let's be honest. But can I say to you, when they come in and they, uh, they, try to, they, they try to rob you power with God, they try to take you out of church, uh, you know, just, it ain't nothing. It's time we stand up and we go recover what's ours. It's time we go recover what's ours. Uh, uh, it's time that we, uh, that we remember God loves us. It's time that we remember in whom we believed. God loves you. Hey, I, can I say to you, God that can take a baby <laughs> that's born with cancer should have died along the way. And he should have died. You know what? He can grow him up to be about an 18, 19-year-old boy right down the road here, and he can call him to preach. And he's down there preaching his first message. That's what God can do. Hey, uh, that baby should have been dead to this world. Uh, but God called him. Uh, let him live. Uh, that's what God can do. Well, that's what God can do. What did he do in Luke chapter 15? You know what? He left the 99, went and found that one. I was glad I'm the one, I was that one one day. Jesus, I, he's a reconciler. He's a reconciler. He goes out and gets what's his, and he brings it back. And, uh, with that, uh, and, and, and that's when I, uh, it's time that we go recover some things. It's time we encourage ourselves in the Lord. But it's time we recover all. Recover all. Father, I thank you and praise you for the opportunity to have been saved. God, I thank you for the opportunity to be in your house this morning. God, I ask you, God, to go with us. Lord, as we go throughout our day, God, that you'd help us, God. Uh, Lord, that we'd serve you in a mighty way, God. Lord, I ask you to bring us back tonight, God. Lord, meet with us in the old-time way. I thank you, God, for all that you do. Help us to recover some of those things that we've lost. Help us to have power with you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.